Hello Indie Game Lovers and Herbs and Nerds, my name is Phoenix and this is Indie Game News. Today we look at base building and survival genre. Don't forget to check video description for additional information. Time for updates of already released games. Station Years has seen some great updates since its initial release on the early access in December last year. In September, the developers added programmable circuits to the game, greatly enhancing complexity of the game and giving a far greater control of what you are able to do within the game. The device will run up to 128 lines of code and with some clever design it can be really powerful. Some cool design possibilities include things like climate control, allowing you to fine-tune control of the coolers and heaters and vents, or lightning system control. Developers added external side where you can test your designs and share the code with other users. More recently, the game team added trading and AI missions. Initially, it will be just trading, but once that work out, they will look at how the mission system that is already implemented can be extended to include people coming via those ships. Works has also started on expanding medical systems. Developers want to move away from the simple take the pill and forget system and implement a more advanced surgery system where you will have organs and those will need looking after individually. Station Years has been in the early access for a year now and is in a very good place as the early access go. The game sits at the positive 83% positive review score on Steam, with recent reviews raising to as high as 91% score. Developers sold approximately 100,000 copies of the game, so financially studio is doing very well and there is low risk of abandonment that is always something worth considering in the early access titles. Deep Rock Galactics, the Space Dwarves, the Machine Guns, Survival and exploration game has seen some new updates and new roadmap. Job opportunities introduces some interesting options when it comes to gameplay. Players now start the game on the probation system. The probation period is a 9 mission long assessment and will take you through different regions of Hoxes and challenge you with the various missions to complete. You can still join any mission on the server list regarding of completion of the probation period. Completing missions that is a part of the assignment grants you a bonus rewards in the form of crafting materials and credits. After completing the probation period, you will have unlocked all the regions and missions. This is nice introduction to the game and allows the players to learn all that their game has to offer. When you max out character at level 20, you get the option to complete the retirement application assignment for that character. When you retire character, that character will reset to level 1 and you will lose all the programs and weapons and upgrades for that character. You will, however, keep all the progression perks, credits and crafting materials and vanity items. The first time you retire character, you will also unlock an extra perk slot for that specific character. Retiring character is the only way to increase your player rank both 26, since you need to gain character's level in order to gain player ranks. Developers are also considering introducing unlocks of vanity and other features for players above rank 26. We have seen more missions added to the game, addition of 8 new armors and some difficulty tweaks to better suit 2 player experience. Prior to that the game heavily rewarded solo or 4 player team, but 2 player teams were struggling to keep up with the firepower. Now this is no longer the case and you can play as duo without being hindered. A part of that, ton of bug fixes and optimizations. According to the roadmap, next few months should give you more difficulty options, daily adventure exploration mode, a major space rig overhaul. Deep Rock Galactic, sold approximately 440,000 copies, is sold at very respectable 92% positive review score on Steam out of nearly 6,000 reviews submitted. Okay, not as much of a hit as the previous two games, but quite interesting small title. Seeds of Resilience have seen some good updates recently. Before we talk about the updates, let me quickly introduce you to the game, as with less than 2,000 copies sold and 15 reviews, Chances are you haven't heard about this. Seeds of Resilience is a turn-based survival building game that rewards patience and understanding of how the world works around you. Your job is to build a village on a deserted island and prepare for merciless nature disasters. You will have to learn to choose the right items, understand nature's patterns, use real medieval constructions and craft techniques in this turn-based management game. It's all about the progression. You start with a stone axe and a shelter made out of branches to finally build elaborate houses and mechanized workshops. You will need to strike a balance with environment around you and observe its responses to human activity. 
Maybe you should avoid fishing every day at the same spot or cutting down the whole forest. With the game being turn-based, you can carefully plan your actions before you commit to any decisions giving you slower pace but extra level of thought that can be added to the way you play it. The game introduces seasons and weather survival. Weather now progresses through a natural cycle of spring, summer, autumn and winter. You will need to adjust your plans accordingly to survive nature dormant periods. With that we'll see some fluctuations in the fishing population. The more efficient you become at fishing, the less fish can escape you. As a result, the less fish is left to reproduce, so high fishing yield becomes harder to maintain each year and requires careful management. Sometimes reducing yield for a few years to allow population to recover will be a healthier solution than doubling your effort to catch more. Lesson our fishing industry should have learned years ago but keeps ignoring. Finally, the season updates add the windbreak. Heavy forest area protect you from devastating effects of heavy storms and maintaining suitable windbreak area may be crucial to your long-term prosperity. Another update recently helps with a new player experience, adding early islands and proper tutorial for new players. Game is currently sat at 73% positive review score on Steam. Time to talk about recent releases. Atomic Society released on Steam Early Access on the 15th of October this year. The game has been in development for a while and was available from developers' website prior to entering Steam. In Atomic Society, you take charge of a small settlement after a global collapse, an attempt to rebuild civilization in your own little corner of the world, the way you see fit. You will not only deal with the regular issues of colony management scenes, like resources, building locations and task allocation to your worker, more importantly, you are in charge on shaping society on a much deeper level. You will be deciding what laws to uphold, change and punish your citizens for. Slowly over time, changing what your citizens' moral compass looks like. As developers have stated, Atomic Society involves judging controversial real-life so social and political issues, including abortion, sexuality, murder and several others. It also allows players to set the law and punish in the way some players may find disturbing or offensive. Though you are free to build society the way you believe, the game can be quite heavy on moral choices, but if it's done well, it can bring extra value to this oversaturated genre. So far the game has received 80% positive review score on Steam, out of over 150 reviews submitted. The Colonies is another title that we have been waiting for release for a while. The game released on the 24th of October and is full release title. I always find it to be bonus when it comes to the building genre. The Colonies is a settlement building game inspired by the classic titles like the Settlers and Unknown series. You take control of a team of self-replicating robots who have escaped from Earth and are searching the galaxy for a new home where they can fulfill their dream to become a human. You will advance through three different ages as you build infrastructure for your colony by constructing roads, boats and train system. Harvest natural resources, set up farming and food production, create expedition to discover new lands and research new technology. The game reminds me of the early Saturn series but with the cute robots instead. The Colonies received 78% positive review score on Steam out of 170 reviews submitted. Ok, time for announcements. QB Factorium is set to release this summer. You will build, manage and grow the thriving colony, discover new lands, craft legendary weapons and defeat your enemies. Cubic Factorium will feature different biomes to explore, plenty of resources to exploit, complex machinery to build and interesting production chains to master. The heart of your colony consists of the loyal colonies who will mine resources, farm crops and craft tools and weapons. Each colonist has different sets of skills that will change based on the jobs he or she is performing. Managing your colony's needs and abilities is vital to ensure your colony's efficiency. Game is set to focus strongly on transportation and automation, as well as production chains, so three things majority of base building fans love in their games. QB Factorium features a number of transportation systems, like trains, conveyor belts, zeppelins and more. Automated depots and inserters are there to help you store, sort and keep track of all your goods. The game is built with a modding scene in mind, so you can expect full mod support when released. Finally, we come to my favorite game of this month news. Floatsum is set to release next year. Floatsum takes a more positive and light-hearted look at the post-apocalyptic world. Your job is to survive in the feel-good apocalypse world. You manage your drifters as they try to survive in the harsh ocean world, where everything is trying to eat you or sink your town to the depths of the sea. You will need fresh water, seafood and scrap 
to make sure your drifters can make the best of this wet situation. You will scavenge oceans for relics of the past, control direction of your float, managing your task, avoiding dangers and looking for new ruins to dismantle and incorporate into ever-growing settlement. The game, as you can see, is very graphically pleasing, with a fun take on the post-apocalypse. It reminds me at first glance of the oxygen not included, but on the ocean. I will definitely keep my eye on this title and report more as we find out more details. Ok guys, that's it in this month indie game news. If you know of any other games that should be featured in the next month update or you release the game yourself, please contact me at write to phoenix at gmail.com or tweet to me at phoenix underscore gaming. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe for more. Nerds and the Death, my name is Phoenix and it was a pleasure to have you here. Take care.